Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop for another day with this radio. Today is, what is today? Today's the 19th, isn't it? Today is May 19th. So, um, I think what I want to do next, you know, there's all kinds of things I could do next. I think the next thing I'd like to do is measure the tube voltages. Just some key voltages on all the tubes. That'd be a plate voltage and if there is one, a screen voltage. And just run through and check to make sure these are all uh, correct or close enough. Uh, the schematic provides uh, voltage information for every every tube. Voltage and current, in fact, for every tube. So I'm going to poke along and do that. That's another uh, kind of tedious operation, so I don't think I'm going to video it while I do it. But if I find something interesting, then I'll, I'll click on the video. And uh, and I'll show you the result, of course, at, at the end of doing this. What I found, if anything, I suspect all the voltages are okay. But by the way, an awful lot of the components in a radio like this, or, or any electronic device, is all about setting up the correct operating conditions for the active components, uh, vacuum tubes in this case, or transistors in a more modern radio. So uh, so that's basically what I'm checking. I'm checking the operating environment of each tube to make sure it's within the normal range and the tube can, can do its thing in accordance with what the radio designer wanted that tube uh, to do and uh, how it should behave in, in the radio he designed. So I'll check that stuff out and we'll see what happens. Actually, just before I get started on that, uh, one of the things that's important to know is the uh, how did they arrive at these voltages uh, that they recorded on the schematic? What instrument were they using? It's kind of a weird issue today, but back then that was an issue. What kind of voltmeter was used to make these measurements? And what were the settings on the radio? Uh, and most importantly, which band was selected? Because often with these AM, FM radios, when you click the FM button, you uh, switch quite uh, quite a bit of uh, you change the operating environment of the tubes this is the very thing I'm talking about a little bit so maybe the plate voltage changes a little bit or something like that so uh, so you need to know if you're going to try to match these voltages how they arrived at them. so in this schematic just past the German part is the English part all tensions indicated in the diagram tensions is uh, a bad translation of the word uh, voltage or pressure really it's what we're talking about here is electrical pressure all pressures indicated in the diagram are measured against mass it's another bad <laughs> translation I think I think what they mean here is the chassis measured against mass with a voltmeter of 50,000 ohms per volt so 50,000 ohm per volt voltmeter is a pretty good voltmeter um, so I'll be using a vacuum tube voltmeter, which is probably a little better than that. I don't know what the rating would be on a vacuum tube voltmeter. I'd have to think about that. All measurements with wave switch in position FM, underlined ratings in AM position. So I should have the radio in the FM mode. And uh, somewhere in here, some of these voltages must be underlined. I don't see any offhand, but uh, could be there's not an awful lot of change. Uh, okay, onward, onward with the test. Okay, this is quite tedious, but uh, I made it to this tube here, EF89, and uh, oop, here we are, this tube here, EF89. Um, this tube, if you can see, it's got two sets of voltages written, one of them underlined, so it's got an FM set of voltages and an AM slash shortwave set of voltages. Um, voltages are measuring okay, but here's the interesting thing. Now, I don't know what to make of this, okay? I'm just going to let you hear it. And uh, I have to remember which pin this was. When I touch a certain pin on this tube, I think it was the screen pin, which I cannot read. <laughs> it's just too small. All kinds of challenges here, including I can't read this stuff. It's too small. 
8 so 7 is the plate and 8 is the screen and we should be looking at 230 and 155 7 and 8 7 and 8 on this tube just double check which tube I'm doing here right Seven and eight. Here we go. Seven. Eight. Where did all that radio stuff come from? <laughs> That's what I wanted to show you. Okay, this is the, s the screen. 162, and this is the plate. Okay, let's try that again. 162 and 240. 160 and 240. 160 and 240 on 160, 240. And it should be 230 and 155. So it's, it's right in the ballpark. The interesting thing though is touching the plate. Why would touching the plate? Now I'm in AM mode here, of course. They get those voltages. Why would touching the plate? bring a radio to life that's not a like why isn't it full of life right now why is it so quiet touching the plate of this tube next in line is the mixer so you know one of the issues with this radio is weak AM and short wave I think I really haven't proven that out but my early observations were it's weak this one seems to su suggest that if you can inject an antenna type signal onto the plate of this tube radio will use it and amplify it. Well, why is there no strong signal back here coming through? We don't know yet. That's nothing to do with tube voltages. Okay, I'm going to carry on. I have to go back to FM, or do I? No, I think the next tube has two sets of voltages too. Okay, interesting observation. That's all that was. Well, here's a similar effect. Uh, I'm in FM mode now, and I'm working on the um, uh, mixer tube here. And what I'm doing, and I shouldn't even be doing this, I have in the FM mode, this plate is meaningless here. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing for crying out loud. Yeah, so I'm working on this tube. I'm going to touch my voltmeter lead to this pin, pin number 8. Notice pin number 8 only has a voltage written here with an underline under it. Pretty sure that's an underline. So you should get 90 volts in AM, which I tested, and yes, it's there. But we're in FM mode right now. But I went ahead and took a reading on this. Here's what happens. how injecting signals later in the radio <laughs> seem to come out of the speaker. Okay, but we don't hear anything coming from the antenna as such. So I don't have an antenna plugged in. That's on the, on FM there's no antenna right now. Is there? Is there? Is there? There is not. So what happens if I stick the antenna in? Where'd my oh, yellow here it is. If we stick the antenna in, yeah, it's bingo. It would, it's impossible to explain. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, when you're working in sec. Okay, but we don't want to listen to it. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was a little bit of nothing there. Okay, well, hold on a minute now. There is something going on here. So there's one value written in this box. So there's two values in there, and the lower one is underlined. The same thing here and here. There's only one value in this box, so you need the radio to be in FM mode to get that reading at this location. So this has to be for FM. Um, it's quite clear when they underline it in, inside the box. 
And it looks like there's always two values. There's always an FM value in how they've done the uh, chart here. This should be an FM voltage. And the number there, let me just double check with my magnifier, make sure I'm reading it right. 90 volts, pin 8. 90 volts, pin 8. Oh, I got, I got zero. How did, we, how did that happen? 90 volts, pin 8. I get a zero. Because it's not pin 8. Because I, I made a mistake here. Maybe this is pin 8. There's nothing there either. That's a ground. I'm pretty sure that's a ground connection. This is pin 9 here. 9, 8. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Something not right here? Is something not right here? Would this be the reason why things are quiet? Let's check it again. It's just a zero there. Uh, let me check the uh, plate, I think, is right here. Why am I getting a zero there, too? Let me check. I'm losing control here. I, I confuse easily. I mean, that, that's the fact of the matter. Looking at the wrong schematic. Huh? <laughs> that ought to do it. So we are looking at this tube. Pin 6 and pin 8 are plates. Both should have voltage 210 in FM on 6 and then on 8, 90. So if I find 6, so I count backwards, 9, 8, 7, 6. There's the 210. Okay, it's 220. 6, 7, 8. Nobody home. Could this radio operate? Am I getting this wrong? Is that really an AM type voltage there? Well, let's put it on AM and find out what happens. Put on AM, we'll read that same voltage to see if 90 volts shows up. AM. Ooh, that's a bad sign there. Is that why this radio was so quiet there for a while? Okay, cleaning the switch is going high on the list here of things to do. Now we'll read that voltage. Because I suppose that these switches aren't making contact. Maybe it's this exact thing. <laughs> I don't know. One for the right one, here we go. There's the 90. So it must be that that single box number is really referring to, to uh, AM mode, even though it's, it really doesn't look underlined at all. Maybe you're just supposed to be smart enough to figure that out. Okay, so I'm going to deem this as being okay. And uh, so there's a couple more tubes, but they're not terribly accessible. They're not accessible from down here. So next step, clean the switches, and then we're going to check this. Uh, like, like this sounds like it's working much better now. Could just be could could, could just be dirty switches. Very good. Very good. Switches. Okay, switch cleaning. Um, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. Depends how accessible the switch contacts are. My intention is to spray some cleaning fluid on the contacts where they're where, where, where they make contact in the switch. We can't get any access through here. All. So I'm going to flip the radio over. Let's get this out of here. Okay. Ooh, practice there. <laughs> Hey, this is a big moment doing this. This is fairly warm here. 
who's, who's warming up. This is slightly warm. Must be, it's a big transformer that's warming up. That's normal. Oh my gosh, this is too heavy here. There we go. Hey, another piece of uh, rubber has come out of this radio. Okay, switches, right. Let me catch my breath. Switches. All down under here. So this this plate you can see wiggling here is probably the release plate. So each switch comes out, I just push the button here. A little tiny tooth has grabbed this plate. And I go to push the next the next uh, button, that plate is going to rotate up and the tooth is going to slip off of it and that button is going to regress or whatever. Here we go, plate up, there, that button's gone. And now the little tooth is sticking here for the button I just pushed. So you call that a release bar, I would say. Can't quite get my fingers in there. Very simple how that operates. I like that. Very simple. Different radios do it in different ways. Some more complicated than others. This one's quite simple. Now getting back to the switches. So these switches are usually open on the end here. Let's switch cameras and see what we can find out. I'm looking for an appropriate place to throw in the uh, cleaner. So let me operate a switch here. So uh, we did a gap, gap there, but you know we're looking at that little tab sticking out. Uh, look at how far up the fluid has to get. So another way is to go right down past the uh, terminals. Uh, the terminals are are not not you know they're not hermetically sealed on these things by any means, and you see there's a couple slots open where there's no terminal. So that's a possible place to blast in some cleaner. Uh, another choice besides the blasting in spray cleaner uh, is uh, dousing it with alcohol. Forty proof. Lots of little holes here and there. But how effective would it be? You know, when you look at this one that's in the middle of the screen, you can see where the terminals go through, there's a gap. So it wouldn't hurt to spray right in that gap, but how much of the switch is it going to cover? It's not going to get very far. And this one way down here. Same deal. I have heard of people so not not soaking a radio like this, but soaking other things right, just soaking it right in a, like a tank of uh, alcohol or even WD-40. Can you imagine that? I'm not about to do that. Never do it with something like this. You need a huge tank. <laughs> now from the side, can can we get at it from the side? Good question. Can we uh, bring over a strong light here? Yeah, that's a strong light. So I'm trying to look at the side. Looks looks like it's wide open. Oh, here's one we can see better. Uh, I don't know what I can see there. Still too dark. And I'm trying to blast the light through in various ways. It's not working. Okay. So we've got like three or four different approaches here now to get at the, get at these switches. This piece right here. Nothing. Nothing's going on with it.
Okay, uh, so that's one aspect, is how to get the fluid in there. And then when you get the fluid in there, you've got to work the switches. You've got to work them. So the way to do that, of course, is to get this bar to stay open. Uh, so it's to stay up. And a simple way of doing that is to push one button down. Push one button down, the bar is held up, and no other switch can lock. So you can work them. That's the idea of that. Oh, such a big deal being made of just throwing in some cleaning fluid here. But I know from experience these are not easy to get a good result out of. I think I'll use my uh, more, more expensive cleaning fluid in a spray can under pressure. Try to blast it up. Let me look. Let me look at in here. Sometimes these switches are like really in a container. Uh, other times they're not. They're actually really quite wide open. And I really can't tell. Just can't see enough. Other thing is you want to tip the radio in such a way that gravity is helping the fluid get to where you want it to. Okay, spray time. Okay, here we go. Just got to get this tube out of here, which is kind of in the way. See, this is one of the tubes I could not test the voltage on because the two bases in here. Likewise, this one's the same way over here. The two bases inside this uh, FM can. So that's why I couldn't read the voltages on those. Now, blast away. Should do these one at a time. The first switch here. It's a lot more difficult than there we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> you can see the uh, fluid it just came pouring out the bottom end of it here. to tell but it's all fluid soaked down there so definitely got fluid all through the switch now I don't think that one was causing a problem I think well the only one I don't really know. they're all probably causing a problem okay let's pick this up again you know what there really is no gap at the end here these switches. Son of a gun. Okay, I'm gonna read inside one. <laughs> there we go. Oh, didn't like that sound. Okay, once again. See any fluid pouring out this time? Okay. Sometimes I find when you spray the, the fluid, you can't tell, but only gas is coming out. Next one. So I think when I look at the switch, what they've really done here is all the switches look like this. 
Well, these ones, these three look different because they have an additional plate that they've used to mount these parts on, sitting on top of the switch. Oh, those tricky engineers. Is making that sound. Ooh. Not this, I hope. There's lots of parts actually hanging below the uh, the edge here. You see, have a, a lift over here on the side. This gives a little bit of clearance. The other side, though, it's no similar. Thing. Okay. Just trying to make observations whenever possible. Okay, now we're going to try to dose this switch. Oh boy. This big can's kind of in the way. Basically, all it does is it just pushes the uh, release bar up and lets the buttons release, and then somewhere in there the power gets cut. So I'm not going to do that one. I'm not going to do that one. Yeah. Okay. Did that work? Wow, it's hard to tell. So what we do here is we just carry on now, working on the radio paying attention to the quality of the uh, of the buttons um, as we push them. And if, that's how we'll find out if it's working well or not. What else can we do here? Um, on a, sort of a high level thing. Uh, I use, I, the way I detect a, a bad resistor is generally by the voltage test I just did. Um, that's certainly not capable of detecting every bad resistor, but the ones that are likely to be bad are the ones that are carrying the plate current and other fairly heavy, heavier currents, the signal resistors, not likely to have gone anywhere serious in terms of changing their value. Um, we, we still have all kinds of electrolytic capacitors in here, but from what I've seen they look pretty good. Maybe not these. Now, what, what are these over here? See, they may not look good because there appears to be a little bit of stuff coming out of one of them, but maybe not. What are those? Um, don't know. I think they have to do with the speakers. Don't know. Don't know. Okay, don't know what to do next, really. Well, we could get into, uh, well, let's do this. Let's play the radio, find out how it works on AM and shortwave. See if it really is weak or not. Maybe that was a false observation earlier on. It's quite quite possible. Spin this guy around. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna hook up the proper antenna and, and give this guy a real good chance. Well, I've been looking at the back of this radio for a little while, wondering, well, where are you supposed to put the shortwave antenna in? This is the FM input for the dipole. This is a ground terminal. Why, it's right there. This link is connecting the antenna, the uh, short wave antenna, if you like, uh, to the FM antenna as a just a really cheap and lousy way to get something going. Now, I don't see how to get this off here easy. There we go. Stay there. I guess it can stay there. Pretty close. Perfect. And then the, F, the uh, shortwave antenna connections here. Now I always have a choice of hooking up the, the, the live wire, if you like, or the grounded wire. Usually I just start with one. 
Let's see, see how that works out. I need to ground this. Then this ground terminal down here just goes right to the chassis. So I'd have to just clip this anywhere onto the chassis. If I choose to do that, this is going to an outdoor antenna. Uh, nothing I'm terribly proud of, but it works well. A uh, folded, folded dipole antenna. Okay, so I think we're ready here. This isn't turned on yet. I'm just checking to make sure I can push the buttons. Yep. Okay. Let's give him. Let's give him a run for his money, Mr. Radio. What can you do? Okay, just keep going here. Okay, radio on. Yeah, I haven't got a button push. So we'll start with the AM side of things. Volume control. I think I still need this big tool here. Okay. So having that antenna attached, maybe adding it to the AM loop here. Okay, we'll go full power. Lighting's fairly nice. Here, the original lights. Still doing a nice job. Okay, let's tune around. Let's see what we can get. Now, I believe it's just this, just this antenna that's working. I don't think it's this one. Yeah, doesn't seem to have any effect. So we want to tune on the broadcast band around uh, 590. Okay, let's steer the antenna. Oh, well, okay. Something happening there. There's a stick. You just never know <laughs> when a problem is going to show up. So these wires? Doesn't seem to be. Oddly enough, there's these two tails they left on. Kind of weird. Usually you just clip these off. Maybe they forgot. Whoever did this just forgot to get rid of these little tails. So what's... Here. Use some kind of glue or something that's just fracturing and breaking off. You can hear the stations there. Strikes me there's an alignment problem, and that's why doing that can make it make it work better. Okay, so what is going on with this? Put it right on the edge. It's very odd. So these wires go down a copper tube. Can you kind of see it there in the camera? That's a copper tube. Go all the way down. I think they come out on the... Now that sound isn't necessarily an improvement. It's, it's louder. It doesn't mean it's an improvement. As you can hear the station now. Okay, I'll turn the antenna a bit and make that happen. It seems to disappear. So this 
little plate here. It is. Look at this. What's, what's this all about? There's a switch here. What's the story on this? You know what this is? This cuts off the loop antenna and then you're reliant on the other antenna. I'll bet you that's what that is. And then on the control out here. Aha! Ha, ha, ha. So you might remember there was a funny symbol on the antenna control. So that symbol indicates you've switched to the outdoor antenna. Let's try this. Okay, now we're going to switch. So this isn't connected. So this doesn't switch this one off. It adds this in. That's what's going on. That's what's happening. Okay. I'm going to ground my antenna. The radio got quieter. Put it on. Sounds like the radio retuned a little bit. Tune the radio. That's what you get with this. I just got to move this a little bit to get. That's what you get without it. Wait a minute, where'd the big clip go? Get the ground off. Lots of fun with antennas. Okay, point is the radio is operating. Let's take this right off. The antenna retune or the uh, radio was retuned on that A little event. Okay, let's steer the antenna. When I had the radio swung over here, the antenna was in a different location in the universe. It seemed to work a little differently. Let me cut, cut this. Uh, I can still hear it. Okay, so first thing I want to show you is uh, what shows up in the little window here. Let me switch to my close up camera. So, in the window, see the antenna is swinging while I do this. That little guy shows up. to indicate you've, you've connected to the outdoor antenna. Inside rotary antenna. Okay. Uh, so was, was there something else? Wasn't there something else? Oh yeah, the magic eye. So what is the magic eye doing? Let me hold still as best I can. We'll tune the radio. Now that's a noise signal without much modulation, so you don't hear much out of the speaker, but you can see the, the RF side of it's quite strong. I, I would expect these lines to come right into contact, like to close right up on a strong signal. Nothing does it. Okay, check the volume. Let's go back to the where the station is, even though it's hard to hear. Where'd you go? So how high is the volume control turned? To get that much volume out of the radio. Okay, so that's down to zero. 
That's a quarter turn. Yeah, that seems like lots of volume to me. Okay, uh, now let's. Uh, this is typical reception quality for an AM radio in my shop. Not very good. Off an antenna like that here in the shop. Let's go to FM though, uh, or, or a, a short wave rather. If we go short wave. Hello. Okay, just keep paying attention to that. We want to go to short wave one. Oddly enough, I've got these numbered funny. Two and then one. And up here it's two and then one. You'd think that one, two, wouldn't it? Come on. So we want to get on band number one, which is this one. That's pretty quiet. Uh, no antenna. There's no antenna. That's why it's quiet. Okay, we'll go back to our antenna experiments here. Okay, ungrounded with a fair bit of volume. And then if you hook up the ground, which is a better way to operate with this kind of antenna, by the way. Folded dipole antenna. Let's leave it like that. The volume is low because the antenna signal itself is relatively weak. The idea with this antenna I use is you get uh, you get a little bit of a weaker signal, but you get much less noise. And the combination is just fine. Let's just turn this up a little bit. Okay, and now we're going to go hunting, hunting for something. What can we find on this radio? So we're on shortwave one. We're right to the top here, 7 megahertz. We need more volume. Chugging noise is, is interference. That tapping sound, that's interference. It's not the radio. 7. It's just, it's, here, listen to that interference. See how the Clicking has increased in pace. I have no clue what does this. And it will eventually just go away. So we're at 9.33 9 has a strong station. Let's see if it's there. So that little radio, I picked up this station with a little chunk of red wire. I didn't even do anything with it, and I picked it up quite clearly. So it's no feat for this radio to receive this particular station. Every toiling, heavy laden sinner. The indication on the uh, magic eye here is uh, next to nothing.
that should be closing right up on this station's signal is so strong let's keep going up up the band here getting quieter getting quieter I noticed this before, this strange thing right in the middle of the band. Another station. Very tricky to tune this radio. I'm barely moving the knob. I right by these things and never know they're there. Picking stuff up. A little bit of movement. Massive attention as a result of bias against black lives. The U.S. government is in full support of this new U.N. treaty with the public has submitted drifting. I just can't believe the nonsense that people are willing to speak in public. I can't believe it. I just get on a radio, grab a microphone, and say whatever the heck you want. Just complete bullshit comes out of people's mouths. It's not even, it doesn't even rank as propaganda. <laughs> you know, good propaganda is believable. It's just, I, I don't know. I get so upset listening to that stuff. Who is that guy? I want to know his name. Who is he that he grabs a microphone and starts yapping about this nonsense? Who are these people? <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it here. Very hard to tune. A backlash in the knob where you turn the knob and when you let go the knob goes back but we're talking about minuscule amounts of movement and that's because of things like tension in the uh, string system uh, most importantly uh, bad uh, lubrication of the capacitor and all these back forces when you're turning it on a radio like this see a big band here 7 to 22 so is it tiny little movements in here that are critical? The whole thing becomes, I mean, you can go like this. Oh, there's nothing there. There's nothing there, see? Oh, there's nothing here. some of this stuff. So on a radio like this, and you tune quickly, you hear the thump, thump, thump. That's basically the DC voltage being generated in the detector for the brief moment the signal is there. And that DC voltage makes that whooping sort of sound. Actually, it doesn't quite sound like that, does it? But very easy, very easy to, 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 to hear it. But when you go after it, it comes, it comes a little more tricky. Okay, enough about how to tune the radio. 15 megahertz. You should get one at 15770. There's that tapping sound again. What could that possibly be? That, that, that thing haunts me. Make it 
I think the tapping gets louder. I think it's it's indicating the general sensitivity of the radio is getting better. Plus, a background noise shows up up here. So part of what I'm doing here is I'm assessing the need for an alignment. Not something I want to jump into because in this radio, the things you need to adjust, the, these these things are all waxed in, and I've never de-waxed one of those things. Seldom are they waxed up like that. So, uh, well, let's check short wave two. Now I won't be able to receive anything, but just a volume comparison. That sounds like about the same volume. Where's all the ticky ticky sounds? Five megahertz. Shouldn't hear anything down here. Not any real six. six. Shouldn't really hear anything here. Like in terms of international broadcast, it's not the right time of day. But the uh, local AM station in Toronto, 1010. Uh, broadcasts a short wave signal. I, I think it's 60, I think it's uh, 6060. I'd have to check. It's a very weak signal intended to come up into cottage area. That I'm in, I live in the cottage area of Ontario. We're on the fringe of it. I'm on the fringe. Okay. Well, generally speaking, it seems. Sure seems like it needs a little bit of alignment to bring it up. That's what it seems like. Okay, but it's working. Very good. Except for this button. That sounds good. a little like a gun, doesn't it? Get rid of it there, but now this might null out the noise, but it might also be nulling out the radio station at the same time. Eight sixty. how much the eye operates on this pan. Again. That's, that's more what you want to see. Only with stations. I'm hunting for a particular station here, a French station, which I use to judge radios. It's right here. Let me engage the outdoor antenna. Barely here up there. Okay, that's enough of this. I've had enough. I've had enough. What does this say to me? It says the radio is essentially working but needs alignment. That's what I would get out of this little experience here. Um, certainly, uh, certainly, I don't know about certainly anything. Let's take a look. I was going to say, certainly I can do the IF side of things. Yeah, so that's got to be these and these guys. They look like they have hollow slugs in them. So I don't think any of this is accessible from underneath. Looking ahead now, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to take a look so I know what's, what lies ahead. So tomorrow we'll do the uh, 
alignment. Oh my gosh, well they are accessible underneath also. Oh, that's not waxed up, is it? Did they wax those up too? not switched on. It's definitely wax here. Feels like wax in all these too. Darn them. Darn them. Okay, so we're going to stop here. We may have reached kind of the end of the road here because uh, de-waxing those things, I'm just not sure. I, I don't have the experience in doing it, and this is not my radio, so it's not really, just doesn't sound like a good idea for me to do that. So my options now are uh, do some more of these capacitors for reasons not apparent. I'm not picking up any sense that any of these capacitors need to be changed. And uh, maybe even call it a day. Oh boy, i got to think hard about this. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching. It was a bit of a run around in circles here today, but uh, moving forward bit by bit. See ya.